My first talk in outside of Japan was 2001 at the, the Linux Expo Paris in 2001. Yeah, this, th that was my first talk in English. And, uh, uh, back then, I couldn't speak English that well. Yeah, I'm not well <laughs> still, but uh, it's, it's, it was much worse. So that uh, then time passed. It, it was even before the, the first RubyConf in, uh, in Tampa, Florida at the uh, same year. So the, the Paris is the you know, very important place for the history of the Ruby, especially in the international wide. So that yeah, I visited this, uh, I visited here several times uh, for the conferences and the events. Come on. <laughs> hey, it's rebooting. So that uh, back then we didn't have we didn't have rails. So that uh, Ruby was basically nothing. You know the newborn scripting language from the, you know, Far East. And then uh, Paris no, to... Oh. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, it's probably it's coming. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for the patience. So, the, th th that is why I came here for the uh, the Paris RB conf. The, the, oops, I need to stick in there. <laughs> Don't go. The Ruby was created in uh, 1993, then uh, released in the public in 95. So the, it was, you know, it was created as a scripting language. And then uh, gradually grows up into the web programming language, uh, thanks for the Rails. The, now it's a pop, very popular programming language. It's, it's the 15th in the TOB index uh, out of the 150 programming languages. You know, it's even higher than several very popular languages like Haskell and Rasp or something, even not Camel. And uh, it's eighth in the Redmog index which is also the, the pop popularity ranking in of the, the programming languages. So the, and the Ruby is not just Rails. So the, you know, Ruby is predates Rails, because, so the Re Ruby is not just for Rails. So the Ruby can be used as a scripting language, and then Ruby can be used as a sysadmin language, like, a, you know, the chef and puppet. Okay, DevOps people use Ruby as well, and then, uh, some people even use uh, Ruby for the mobile application uh, using some technology like a JRuby or a Ruby Motion compiler. And uh, some people try to use the Ruby in the science field, like a static, statistic, and uh, machine learning. And uh, in those fields, the Python and R and uh, you know the recent coming uh, Julia is fake, uh, popular, but uh, still Ruby can be applied to the, those kind of the science field. And we are trying to make it. And uh, some people use Ruby for embedding field. Like uh, we have the, the alternative implementation of Ruby language named mRuby, which can be used in the, the, the embedded field. Like uh, you can run in the 
the Ruby in very teeny computers, like uh, with uh, you know 500k me me memory or even the 32 uh, kilobyte of memory. The the Ruby is uh, became quite popular, and very few software grow big. You know, your software, you create software, especially open source software, and then maybe you get uh, 50 stars or 100 stars or something. But uh, gave tr to dominate the world, we have to make our software popular. The, uh, actually, did I enter this popularity of Ruby language? No. <laughs> It's kind of the accident of success. But uh, we can learn lessons from the history of the Ruby language by using the very important tools of the programming, abstraction, and the generalization. Uh, did apply those tools to the Ruby history. Okay. The, I find one uh, the first important factor of the uh, software success is motivation. The, why did I create Ruby? Uh, just for fun. <laughs> you know, uh, back then, it's, it's early 90s. And uh, you may know that, but uh, in Japan, uh, in early 90s, the bubble economy was crashed. And we had very severe economical depression. And, uh, my pro I was working as a professional programmer, working for the internal, uh, internal tools for the software developers. And uh, my project was canceled. And uh, I was assigned as a maintainer of the existing tools. And uh, everyone else is assigned to the other uh, you know, money-making project. And uh, oh, me and uh, the other guys as was left, left alone to maintain the software, but uh, you know, those huge tools created by others without very few documentation, internal documentation, and then, uh, yeah, we got a phone call every two days or something, and then, okay, your tools don't work well, okay, reboot the machine. <laughs> That's it. But uh, I had a time, I had a uh, computer on my desktop, and my manager was also assigned to the, the other the money making project. So that he didn't manage me. So that I was basically unmanaged. Okay, let's start some kind of something, skunk works. So that uh, I was a programming, uh, I liked programming for my whole life. And uh, I very loved the programming language. I was very, very, very interested in programming language in general. So that I read through the many books and then papers about the programming language. So that I wanted to create my own programming language. And then I have time. I have a computer on my desktop, and uh, I was amazed. I, I, okay, let's start something. Then it the that's why I created Ruby. So the, the, my, my basic motivation is love for programming languages. The creating language is kind of like an ultimate freedom because so that you, I think not many of you created programming language, right? <laughs> so, but uh, you do programming. So for you guys, the programming language is the something to learn, something to use. But for me, programming language is something to create and then something to guide other programmers for better programming, better productivity, or something. So that basically Ruby, uh, Ruby users, all of you, are kind of brainwashed by the designer of the language. <laughs> okay. This is kind of like a freedom. I decide how you think. <laughs> I guide you guys program. This is ultimate freedom. <laughs> Ma joking. 
the motivation is different from uh, software to software, project to project. But for me, the, the, the motivation behind creating Ruby is the love of programming language and ultimate freedom. The, the think about the motivation behind your software, your project. Uh, the software project is not uh, the effort of a day or week, but years. Maybe it took two years to be success, or 10 years, or even 20 years. So the, the, for the software success, we require long-lasting motivation. So the maintaining motivation is the very key to the success. Okay. Second factor, define target audience. Uh, the, for Ruby's target audience is me. I created Ruby for myself. And, uh, I'm a programmer. I wanted to program in, in, program in better programming language, you know, some kind of the ideal programming language. So the, that's why I created Ruby for, to satisfy myself. But uh, you know, thanks for the internet, copying software is free. So that I put it in the, on the internet just for backup. But you copied it, <laughs> and you used it. And surprisingly, you liked it. That's OK. It's the nature of open source. But uh, remember, its target audience is me, myself. So that if you feel like myself, you will, be, you will like Ruby language. The different people like different language. Some people like Python, OK. Some people like Haskell, OK. Some people like whatever language, and it's OK. But uh, uh, Ruby has very clear target audience, me. <laughs> so the, and then, uh, yeah, friends like me, they love my language. So the, you have to define the target audience for your software. And uh, you have to be concrete. Now, OK, some other guys might like project, maybe. No, you have to be concrete. OK, third one, community. The, many years ago, when I was working as a the professional programmer to create the you know, enterprise software, so that we didn't have community of the software. We, d we had uh, users, but I, we don't call it community. But uh, in right now, in this decade, we, we have new way to develop software. Many software comes with the community. Open source software, free software, comes with the community. And the community is the very essential part of the software development. Uh, net, we are uh, in the age of the net-driven software development, or in the social coding, thanks to the GitHub or GitLab. So the, now, we don't have to be a member of the company of the software development. So, so imagine that. So that think about the you know, proprietary software, like a, say Microsoft Excel. So that if you don't like Microsoft Excel, you have the the idea to improve that software. But uh, what what can we can we do? Call the Microsoft support. Okay, uh, this software must have this kind of feature or something like that. But, uh, but right now, if you have the, you know, some I nifty idea to improve the software, the, if the software is the open source software and, uh, you know, hosted in the GitHub, you can easily create the, create the, you know, the proposal issue or even the pull request. So that 
you don't have to be a closed member of the software development. So the improvement can be driven by the community. The, the development is uh, very open. So that if thou art willing, so you can be a member of the community and that you can be uh, involved in the development of the software. So that it, the open source software, the, the new way of the software development is pretty much open to contribution, open community. So the, in open source software, imperfectness is very, very important. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, very early days of Ruby, it, it has so many bugs. <laughs> uh, I opened up the, the Ruby mailing list. So, okay, uh, more than 20 years ago, we are uh, communicating via the, the mailing list, very ancient way of the open source communication. And uh, the first, uh, first mail in the mailing list is, the, is from my friend. Okay, congratulations on the, the release of the Ruby software. As a friend, okay, he knew that I, I was developing Ruby. So, that, so the finally, I opened up, I, re, I released the software. So he said, congratulations. The second mail is a bug report. <laughs> Okay, on my computer, it, it, Ruby didn't comp compile. So that, yeah. then the third letter from myself, okay, we you have to apply this patch or something like that. Okay, uh, that way, okay, people are very easy to be involved. Uh, a similar time frame, so that. Uh, Netscape communication uh, company uh, failed in the, in the battle of the, with the, the Microsoft or the browser wars. And then he, that they, the Netscape company, uh, decided to make it open source. But uh, the problem is the Netscape navigator, the browser, was a very, very, very complex, huge software. Millions of lines were called. So that uh, they struggled to create a community because it is very, very difficult to involve into the, the software. But uh, Ruby was uh, much simpler compared to the, the Netscape Navigator, now Firefox. And then, the, it's even simpler compared to the, this time frame. Okay, uh, the first version of Ruby is uncomplex source code is fit in the single floppy disk. <laughs> it is quite small back then. So the, it, for Ruby, it, the, the people are very easy to, to involve and contribute. The, the imperfectness is the key for the involvement. Okay. The second key to the involvement is the policy or philosophy. So the Ruby emphasized the joy of programming and the human focus for programming. But the, uh, these clear goals can lead the community to involve. So that uh, as for your pro your project you have to form the community around your software, and then you have to guide uh, your software uh, with the policy and the philosophy and imperfectness. Okay, for example, Ruby 3 has the, these clear goals, the better performance, better concurrency, and the better static analysis. So that, that kind of the goals uh, will guide the software development and the community. The policy principle and, uh, and its embodiment. And the repeated refinements will, uh, seeking ideal, or design process, will make your software better and greater. Uh, the one thing is the, the leader, that I believe the software 
uh, design should be uh, guided by the very few people, or uh, if, if the single person, if possible. And then he must he must present the vision beyond expectation. Uh, for example, back in 1993. Uh, people are using Pro. So the, uh, when I released Ruby, so the people sometimes complained about Ruby because you know we have Pro, very ideal scripting language. So that since we have Pro, we don't we don't have we don't need Ruby, the another language. But the uh, the time proved uh, the Ruby. Is better in some cases. Okay, uh, I don't think Pro uh, Ruby beats Pro, but uh, uh, Ruby get po more popular in at least in the web programming language. Uh, so that when Twitter came out, the people complained about the Twitter. The oh, no one used a microblog that. It is limited to 140 characters. So the, by using blog services like a you know a blogger or whatever, uh, you can you can type in as many uh, as many characters, as many sentences, uh, as ma as big as com you want. So the you know blog is better, but uh, in reality. Twitter became very, very popular. Uh, <laughs> back in the, the four days, so that no one expected the, the Ford cars beat the, the horse wagons. But uh, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. But uh, we don't see horses that much recently. <laughs> so that uh, designers, leaders, must present a vision beyond the expectation. Maybe people don't understand your vision at the first moment, but you have to keep presenting your vision. Yeah. Maybe they teased you, <laughs> didn't understand you, but you have to present your vision. Uh, the summary, first summary of the first part: uh, the the success of the the software project comes with the motivation, target audiences, community, and goal seeking. Uh, keep motivation requires. For, because you have to keep running for years. And then you have to define target audiences. And you have to be concrete about your target audiences. And the community is the one of the very most important key, key factor of the software success, in recent software success. The software development style has been changed a lot in last decade. And then you have to keep improvement, and then you have to uh, do the social development if possible. And then the goal seeking design process. Uh, so that, uh, in early stage of your software, so you have to concentrate on the development. But uh, later stage, you are going to the organizing. Now, the okay, first, for example, the early stage of Ruby, we have to concentrate it on the, the Ruby, the language. But the latter, latter, later stage, for example, since, say, around, 2010, so that you have to focus on the community. 
For example, we have to prepare the ruby gems, which can be uh, the packaging of the, your piece of software that can be used as the other software. And then we have to provide the index of your software. So the and a community, like a, this conference or Paris survey, to help each other is uh, more important than the, the, the early stage of the software development. The organizing means community, and the community requires philosophy, and uh, we, you know, probably we share the value of the Ruby language, but uh, it's kind of the vague. Yeah, can you can you define the the you know why you love Ruby in a sentence or two? That's kind of difficult. You know, we share the some kind of the image of the goodness of the Ruby language or Ruby community. But uh, it's quite difficult to define concretely. We have we share the, some kind of the vague definition. But the uh, important things is make them concrete and then lead the community. Uh, design process requires the goal like a Ruby three by three, which is the kind of the you know the hard task. It, uh, but the same principle can be applied to your software, your product, or services, or your, even the companies. So the motivation, target audience, the community, and goal seeking. This is how we dominate the world. So that we have to uh, keep motivation, define target audiences, the maintain community, and the, the goal seeking with the community is the key for the success in the software development. Uh, you can do it too, and then you can create the future. Uh, the two, three, uh, <laughs> uh, why don't you guys speak Japanese? <laughs> hey, well, uh, the creating the future Sometimes we call it innovation. Uh, we have to keep running or die. Uh, Ruby is three for us. For for uh, us, the Ruby three is the the future. And uh, we will release the Ruby three December twenty twenty this year, no matter what happens. <laughs> Uh, Ruby will be compatible because we see some kind of a tragedy in the past. Uh, Python 3 was released in uh, more than 15 years ago, but the people still use Python 2. And then the, its end of life came this year, and uh, they are forced to move on finally after 15 plus years. Same, similar things happened in the past for us. The, we made uh, some kind of the backward compatibil uh, incompatibility in the Ruby 1.9 or Ruby 1.8. And then uh, we had some kind of the compatibility issue. And then uh, the community, some part of the community left it behind using Ruby 1.8 for more than five years, maybe seven years. Uh, the compatibility issues are very, uh, you know, leads to the very tragic moment. And the community division for years, some people left behind. Okay, uh, we are making progress in the language, in the newer version uh, of the language. For example, Python 3 improved a lot since the Python 3.0. But uh, people uh, stick to the Python 2.7 never enjoyed that kind of newer technology, newer improvement. 
So the, uh, we, we had a community uh, division for years, uh, 15 years for Python, then seven years in Ruby 1.9 and later. So the uh, back on reflection, so that Ruby 2 uh, kept incompatible. Uh, kept. And then Ruby 3 will keep compatibility. So that uh, for our goals, so that basically uh, Ruby 3 comes with uh, compatibility uh, without uh, some key corner cases, ask JRB, <laughs> uh, for the sake of the community. Uh, it, but it's kind of the, the innovator's dilemma because so that we need to keep progress, you know, or die. Because, you know, we, we are here in the Ruby community because Ruby is attractive and the Ruby is improving. But uh, if you don't see any improvement in the language for years, so that, you know, the they get bored and then probably people pick new language in your next project. And then, you know, Ruby community is you know, kind of the free, there's no initiation, there's no member fee, no admission. So that you can flee to leave, free to come, free to leave. So that we have to attract people, you. So that for, to attract people, we need to keep progress. But at the same time, so we need to keep compatibility. And it's, Compatibility can be a burden for the progress, but uh, it's, it's quite a tough choice. We have to keep compatibility at the same moment we have to make progress. It's a kind of a contradiction. So that I say Ruby 3 is a big compromise, so that if we can make uh, break the language, so that we can do many, many new things, but uh, but uh, yeah, Ruby 3 is very, this great new language, but the your software will be crushed. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> so the, but uh, we added some many nifty features, like a JIT compiler for the Ruby language, or the pattern matching to the language, not the pattern ma matching of the regular expression, but a, a pattern matching you find in the functional programming languages. Uh, we're going to provide a better ID. So IRB comes with the, uh, the com uh, completion or the document reference or the multi-line edit and even the coloring or something like that. And then we are helping the people behind the language server so that you can provide a better uh, programming experience with using the, some kind of the IDE like a VS Code or something like that. So that for Ruby 3, we will uh, keep improving the tooling. Like you will have the uh, former, the linter, and then type checker for Ruby. And then uh, you will see the type checks for Ruby. Static, kind of static type checking. <laughs> and uh, Ruby 3 comes with the type signatures of the standard library. And we are working with the Ruby gems people to provide the type information for their gems. So that you can see the type information of the, the libraries. And then, oh, along with the type profiler, which can generate the prototype of the type signature of your software, so that you don't have to work uh, to write down the type signature uh, by your hand. And then if you don't satisfy with the quality of the generated type signature of your software, so that uh, you can refine them uh, using the, say, parameterized type or the, some kind of the, uh, dark typing support or something like that. Uh, we, are, we are going to add a numerous method addition to be more convenient I mean, uh, programming. And then, uh, Kind of sneak preview. So that we are going to release the Ruby 3 in this year, and we will work on the Ruby 3 for years and coming years. But uh, 
For myself, I will start working on uh, planning um, Ruby 4. And uh, we were going to make some kind of drastic changes for the language, despite the fact we need to keep the compatibility. Yep. But uh, I have some kind of the nifty ideas for the Ruby 4, but, uh, it, but don't, don't rush it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to disclose it now. It's years ahead. <laughs> so the NJ Ruby 3 for the moment. And then uh, you will see many, many improvements this year. And, uh, and you can uh, join us. The, it's, it's not that difficult to join into the uh, Ruby development. Uh, since Ruby grows big, and we have the millions of lines of code, but, uh, but uh, you don't have to read them all through to contribute. Uh, I don't read them all. <laughs> but uh, now we accept uh, the pull request in the GitHub, so, so that you don't have to uh, become a commit committer access to contribute to the Ruby language. We have... Uh, Hundred, yeah, we have hundred plus uh, core contributors, but uh, you don't you don't have to be one of them to contribute. Just make a pull request, and uh, our core committer will review your will be review your pull request, and uh, the merge it in the GitHub, then uh, copy it into the our standard Git Git repository. So the yeah, uh, it's. I don't, I don't say it's easy because it's written in C. <laughs> but uh, some part of Ruby is written in Ruby, and some libraries come along with Ruby is written in Ruby, so that you don't have to, you know, you have to be a C expert to, to contribute. Maybe we have improvement in the documentation, uh, or maybe in the, yeah, the reference uh, text or something, so that it, you can easily uh, contribute to the language. So that feel free to check out the Ruby's uh, source code from GitHub and uh, see if, you, if there's anything you can uh, involve into the Ruby development. Okay. Uh, I'm, okay, Ruby 3 is my brainchild. I love it and uh, I hope you love it too and uh, you have to be part of the community to nursery them <laughs> and then make it uh, make it even better programming language thank you <laughs> yeah i will take up yeah, uh, so questions any, any questions as there will be two mics that will uh, go through uh, if you just raise hand and yeah. Yet. Is it, uh, just is it three times faster now? Uh, Mike is coming. <laughs> Repeat your question. Hi. Uh, two or three years ago, I listened to your presentation about Ruby 3 and you said it's going to be released when it's three times faster. In comparison to 1.9, is it three times faster now? Okay. Uh, for, you know, the performance is now really the linear things. The, we improved the memory management and uh, we introduced the JIT compiler so that we uh, made, made some up benchmark up script, uh, especially the CPU bound uh, benchmark script. Uh, even uh, more than three times faster. But uh, for Rails application, we don't see that, that much improvement. <laughs> the, and uh, the biggest problem is that we are comparing the, uh, the benchmark on the Ruby 2.0 and the Ruby 3.0, but uh, Rails application don't run on both versions, so that we have to create our own uh, uh, benchmark script in, in maybe in Sinatra or something, not Rails, because of the, you know, the, the most recent uh, Rails do, do not support the, the very old version of the Ruby 2. 
So that we are struggling to create the, the proper benchmarks. But uh, uh, yeah, the, the answer is the yes for some benchmarks. And that we are trying for other benchmarks. <laughs> Yes, uh, mic is running. <laughs> you mentioned that Ruby was uh, built with uh, you as the target audience. Have there been things that have gone into the language that you haven't liked uh, because of maybe pressure from the community saying, we want this in the language? Uh, at the very beginning of the, the Ruby development, so the yeah, Pro was our hero. So the, we mimicked Pro. Uh, we tried to emulate everything in Pro. So the, in the process, I stole too much ideas from Pro. Maybe so the, the dollar something weird variables, like a dollar semicolon, dollar backslash, or something like that. I, I regret that. <laughs> I regret stealing those, uh, those variable names from the, from the Perl. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, the keyword arguments are mimicked by the hash, uh, hash at the bottom of the argument list was kind of the wood, kind of the hack. So that I regret that too. So that I'm, we are in the process of fixing them, fixing it. What? Uh, that display was lost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that's two things I regret. What? Any other questions? Yet. Hi. Um, what is your opinion about uh, over Ruby implementation? And over? Over Ruby implementation. Like, Other imp do, Ruby do you think about Ruby as being MI, or do you think about like being Opal being Ruby as well, or GRuby mm -hmm. being Ruby as well? Uh, since CRuby is the you know the canonical reference implementation, but uh, uh, I thanks the other implementation as well because of the for for example the JRuby performs very well even in the you know, three times faster even more than three times faster in some cases uh, thanks to the JVM uh, so that uh, for some kind of long running server side uh, the 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 rich environment the JRuby is the key uh, the answer for the for the Ruby uh, Ruby environment and then, uh, or maybe we can use Opal to use uh, run Ruby in the in the client side front end so the uh, we I don't think uh, we can run Ruby without uh, Opal. Uh, in in our front end, so that uh, those other implementation has the the you know the merit of uh, their own, so that we are very thankful to the other implementation as well. Any question? Uh, I have a question. Yes. <laughs> uh, in the same idea of that one, what do you think of Crystal? Crystal. Uh, the Crystal is the... Crystal started the, as a, the static type that compiled version of Ruby, uh, and it's written in Ruby, but the Crystal starts its own way. You know, it's, it abandons the compatibility of Ruby, so the... Uh, the method names are different, and uh, we the type system is different. But uh, uh, we see very nifty idea from the language, so that I hope they survives and uh, has a, a, a as as big uh, become the bigger with bigger community. And uh, I, I will I we really really want to see it succeeds. Oh, 
bacteria. And, and what do you think about so sorbet for uh, type uh, checking? Ah, yeah. Uh, maybe we will have the sorbet speak, uh, sorbet talk in this conference, so that uh, the, for the detail of the sorbet, so that the, 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 the was that at the end of the talk. But uh, basically, the we, I mean the. The core contributors working on the Ruby signature and the Ruby type profiler, and then uh, Sobe, and then the other type, static type checker named the Steep, and uh, the the different uh, type system uh, named RDL is working together so that we share the information, basically. So the the Ruby three comes with the basic uh, foundation of the static types. And then the soul base comes on top of it in the future, so that we can work together. So that if we want to see the you know the the casual type checking type profiler works pretty well, and then you have the more uh, what you call it better <laughs> broader static type check, and then soul base will work better. Yes. So uh, you said that Ruby was like your brainchild, and uh, and it you you are the target audience. And um, <clears throat> basically, uh, over the years, as humans, we evolve uh, ourselves, and uh, and we change, and uh, uh, not overnight or whatever, but. How much in that context do you see uh, Ruby uh, has evolved uh, according to your uh, to your initial vision and over the years? Like, do, does your uh, do you have like overall like the same vision, or has it changed very much over the years? Uh, basically, the uh, same. So the, my vision for the programming and the vision of Ruby is. Quite stable, but uh, uh, I had I see more influence for the functional programming in recently last say last ten years. So that we learn a lot from say other programming language like uh, Haskell or Camel or maybe Elixir or Erlang. Then uh, we take the ideas from those languages. What else? And uh, we didn't. So Ruby was as started as a scripting language. So the uh, use as use it as in the web programming like Rails is kind of out of my scope at the at the mo at the beginning. So the but uh, basically basically my basic vision does not change by the web application because of the you know web application itself is built upon the idea of the scripting language uh, what else uh, the, in the in the past we uh, merged some ideas from the active support so the some idea is proven in the rails community and uh, gradually moved toward the core ruby yeah that's 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 part of the ideas out of our, my original scope. So one last question. Will a Ruby be rewritten in Rust in the future? Ruby in is? Rust. Will be rewritten in, in Rust? Will uh, it be? You know, the <laughs> I'm a C expert, so that I, I have uh, I have very uh, tough moment to learning Ruby. I'm an old guy, so that but uh, I encourage somebody to implement the, the alternative implementation in uh, in Rust. Actually, we have the something named the RT choke Ruby, which is written in Rust. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you.